At our theaters in Austin and New Orleans, we had a show called Block Party. Later, we learned some of our neighbors thought this was an actual block party. They thought we were actually going to block off the street and get turned every Thursday night at 9.30 p.m. They were relieved when they found out Block Party was the name of our Anything Goes open mic. In many ways, Block Party was the heart of our community. Anyone from anywhere could show up and do anything they wanted for four minutes. At first, it was your standard stand-up comedy with some storytelling sprinkled in. But then we saw people show up as half-baked characters doing bizarre monologues. Or high-concept song and dance groups. If you had a video online, we turned on the projector and played it. A wrestling league sprouted from within the show. It was stupid. It was smart. It was beautiful, and it was disgusting. One time, someone did a set from the bathroom because they were locked in. Another time, someone set a plastic doll on fire. That same person made a dead fish into a hand puppet. I'm equal parts relieved and heartbroken that Block Party wasn't filmed more often. A lot of great concepts outgrew Block Party and became their own projects. The show became a personal playground for a lot of alternative comics. Over the course of a few months, anyone could end up with 30 minutes of new material they built from Block Party. Not all open mics are of this anything goes variety, but all great open mics are, at their core, the same. A place for comedians to practice in an environment that is tolerant of development. A showcase that forgives failure. The beauty of an open mic is that most people understand the concept and anyone can take part. This can also be the most dangerous part of an open mic. You'll want to cultivate a welcoming vibe so new people feel safe about giving it a try but you'll also want to be very clear about what the boundaries are. As the host and organizer of an open mic, you can ban someone from participating if they cross a line. More on rules later. You definitely want your open mic to be in a public place with a captive audience. A bar is ideal. One distinct advantage stand-up has to other forms is the feedback is built into the practice. You just have to keep going no matter what happened the last time up. If you wanted to be a comic badly enough, a couple of bad shows in a row won't detract you. Likewise, a string of successes won't zap your hunger to get even better. It's also the most challenging art form of the three. You don't have other people on stage with you, so we can feel like it's lacking in the community of improv or sketch, but the community you get from stand-up is still there. It's just different. It usually comes in flashes during a show, in the form of people laughing at your jokes, then comes in waves after when people are hanging out and talking about the show. This is another important reason for having a home base as well as a clubhouse. If your open mic is at a bar, you're already a step ahead. Organizing an open mic is easy. Maintaining it is hard. Getting it off the ground can be the biggest challenge. Try and start with at least three other people you can rely on to show up and perform. Then aim to add one new person per show who wants to give comedy a shot. Running your open mic monthly will ease the burden of filling up time. When you have the people to warrant a weekly show, make it happen.